calculator uh, was first introduced in late 1973. Uh, it was the second scientific calculator Hewlett Packard made uh, following the famous HP 35, the first calculator that they had transcendental functions built in um, and uh, came out a few years earlier. Uh, I bought this one in 1974 for about $475, and one of the reasons is because I was in the surveying field. HP 45 turned out to have certain functions that made it very useful for surveying. Uh, one of the things I'll point out here, set the display here, is it has a LED display, uh, it eats up battery power, it lasts, probably only lasts about three or four hours uh, before it need to be recharged overnight. If you put numbers in it and store stuff in storage registers and so forth and you turn it off, it's everything is gone. So uh, you would have to write down your answers on a piece of paper in the field book. Uh, still pretty darn useful gadget though. One of the things that differentiated the HP 45 from the HP 35 was it had more than one storage. Uh, it had you store and recall keys here. You can store 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there's 10, 10 storage registers. It's got degrees minute seconds conversions, which are is shifted on these two keys, uh, decimal to degrees minute seconds, and degrees minute seconds to decimal form. Uh, and surveyors do things with bearings and degrees minute seconds all the time. Polar to rectangular conversion, which is on this key, the P, the P is two polar, and the, the shifted key is to rectangular. That's to convert a coordinate x y into a uh, angle and distance. Uh, and uh, surveyors are always computing things in coordinates and f to figure out the relationship between points. It also has another little feature down here called the summation key, and that would add up numbers that you had in the thing, x and y, and uh, also accumulate other values which then allow it to figure out standard deviation and means, which is actually determined on this key. So storage ridges 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and, uh, are used for that function, statistical registers they call them. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 are not used by that so that is when you're doing surveying things you could use those for other things like storing your back azimuth if you're doing an angle traverse uh, or if you want to do a traverse with air to compute areas you can use those uh, registers for storing other values that are used to compute a double meridian distance. The one reason I wanted to show how this is to how a little trick that you lose to accommodate surveying type things. So I'm going to move this over and uh, show this kind of thing. In mathematics, uh, the coordinate axis is defined by a positive x-axis to the right and a y-axis up, and angles defined counterclockwise on the positive x-axis. So the trig functions are uh, are always depicted in textbooks and so forth. The surveyors look at the world in North America or the United States anyway. The coordinate axis this way. They have east is to the right, north is up, and angles are measured as an azimuth or a bearing from north. And they're measured clockwise. So uh, without having to do a bunch of conversions to get from this system like subtracting 90 or adding 90 or a bunch of other things, there's another trick that we figured out to to use that. And uh, if I take this bottom diagram, which is the way the calculator thinks and the polar rectangular function thinks, and I turn this x, I turn this upside down, I'm going to flop, flop this around the y-axis so that x is to the left. What I'm going to get is like this. I flop it now uh, because I just flipped it around. It goes that way. Now if I rotate that 90 degrees, I get this situation. Now you see in order to make the thing uh, conform to the surveying world where north is up and, and the angles are going right from that axis, all I have to do is swap north for x and east for y. And uh, everything in the calculator just sort of magically works out as far as these functions go. The next thing to talk about is surveyors use bearings. Uh, and you have bearings in quadrants, northeast quadrant, southeast, southwest, and northwest, and so forth. Northeast is measured from north. Northwest is counterclockwise from north. Southeast is counterclockwise from south. Southwest is clockwise from south. Uh, and it turns out that there's some simple conventions you can use in the calculator with this polar rectangular function in order to get the right variations or differences in coordinates 
out of that polar rectangular function with a simple convention, again, without having to do any additions and subtractions, you don't have to add 180s and do other things to get the quadrants into the azimuths or something. And this is the convention. It looks a little complicated here, but basically if you're going south, your distance has to be input as minus. If you're going northwest or southeast, your bearing has to be minus. So those are the ones where the bearing is figured uh, counterclockwise from the axis. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a little parcel. Uh, I just made this up, but it would be a bunch of bearings and distances. It's very common to find on a survey plat or a survey or in a legal description. And uh, I'm going to show how easy it is to compute this with the, uh, with the HP45. Okay, I usually start with a coordinate. So I'm going to start down here, 10,000 northing. This will be in feet because these are in feet. could be in anything, but this is what I'm most commonly used in the United States. Now I'm going to go up. I want to put that coordinate in, 10,000, enter, and hit the summation key. The, that accumulates X and Y values into register 7, register 8. So you'll see me accessing those registers to get my answers out. Now I'm going to go 46 degrees, 17 minutes, 55 seconds. Northeast is going to be positive. I convert to decimal. Enter a distance 358.146 and just convert to rectangular. Hit the summation key. And I've just traversed up this leg. The value of the northing here is stored in register 7. 10,247.443. And register 8, 10,250.9218. I'll continue. 16.1524. To convert to decimal, it's, nor it's northwest, so it's going to be minus 148.792. Bold rectangular summation. Recall 7. Uh, 10,390.2859, we call 8, 10,217.2689, if I can see it okay. Let me continue on in one more leg here, 89.3232, convert it to decimal. It's southwest, so it's, the angle is positive, but the distance will be negative, 64.343 negative. Polar rectangular, summation, recall 7, 10,389.7718. Oops, recall 8, 10,152.9179. I can store intermediate values like I could store that in uh, other registers just to recall 8, store 2, recall 7, store 1, and I've stored that coordinate pair in these registers. So now I can uh, I can also get differences. So for example, in this case, I'm not going to go all the way around this because it'll take a while. If I wanted to compute the bearing and distance back to my point of beginning, if I had stored this value, I could just do subtractions, but since I didn't, I'll have to enter it manually. But I can take recall 8 and then 10,000, and I can take uh, recall 7 and 10,000. Get my difference in eastings and my difference in northings, convert it to polar. And now I've got the distance is 418.6955. And the bearing is going to be northeast or southwest, 214. Uh, I need to convert it to degrees minutes seconds. And it's going to be uh, north 21 degrees 25 minutes 17 seconds east between those two. So that's basically how you do survey computations with HP45.